Hello there, it's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee. Okay, so today I'm going to make a silhouette of a scared black cat cushion because um, Halloween is coming. Okay, so I've drawn a sketch and I'm just copying the sketch onto a bigger bit of paper. Now, you can actually sew this paper whilst you're doing the sew. And in a way, it's kind of easier and helpful. Oh well. We know what we're doing, don't we? And I can put a copy of this up on Facebook, so that's not a problem. You can just download it and get it to the right size. So what we're going to need for this make is a picture of a sideways on, scared, yowly, black pussycat. And um, I've got some safety eyes as well for the eyes. And I've got some black fleece. Now it's really up to you. You could use fur or you could just use um, black canvas. That's fine. Okay, so pen, paper and scissors. Now I also have a chalk pencil. Now what I can do is I can chalk this outline onto the material and then I can sew. So I've drawn this without any hem allowance so when I cut I'm going to need to add hem allowance. Now I just find it easier to draw trace copy without hem allowance and then I can just cut around. So. Now like I said it's entirely up to you. What we can do is we can literally just pin this on there and then sew and if we use a slightly different coloured thread then we can cut the fabric afterwards. Or we can cut it out properly and then we can, with our chalk pencil, just draw around. So. Now I think I'm going to go for the easier option because there's no point me telling you something and then not showing you and doing something completely different. Now all I have to do is, after I've pinned this, is follow this line around. So easy enough, I know I can do that. And then I'm going to cut it. I do need to remember to leave a hole so that I can stuff the cushion and that I can put the eyes in. So let me hold that up so you can see. That's all I've done. It's folded over once, twice, fluffy side on the inside and paper on the outside. Now the machine doesn't mind sewing the fleece and it doesn't mind sewing the paper, but it won't sew the pins. So we do have to be careful when we're sewing around this line that we don't catch any pins at all. So I know, how simple is that? We are sewing. So what I've done is I've started halfway along the back now the reason I've done that is because that's the best place to do the turn around for turning it inside out. Um, it's best just to use a straight edge. If there's an inconspicuous edge, like there was lining or something, then I could do that. But there's not really, not on a silhouette cushion. So yeah, the machine's having no problem. Alright, I'm going to pause the camera now. And I will be back with you when I'm closer to sewing the end of the line. And one thing I would say, though, is where I've drawn it and it's kind of gone up there, just because that's my line, I'm not going to sew those on. I'm literally one line around the outer edge. Okay. Hi, welcome back. Okay, so I've sewn around my edge. And I have started cutting it because, well, I didn't want to waste your time. You, you've seen somebody cut something out before. So now that I've got a very strong line, I'm a bit more comfortable cutting 
closer than I would if I was doing a hem allowance. So this means that I've saved even more material because I'm not having my hem allowance. Now with little fiddly things like this, um, you are going to have to, when you come to certain points that turn in, you are going to have to sort of trim down to the stitches. And this is just so that you can pop it out the same shape that it is on the inside. Okay, so what I'm left with is that. So I, I've saved as much as possible of my, my material. So I can put that in the to-go pile. Yes, now this paper should peel off pretty much like uh, perforated, because it is, and we can get rid of it now. Um, we could have got rid of it before, it just made the stitches a lot more clearer. So I can get that all done, and then that's all out of the way. So next job, really, oh, next job is, I'll get rid of the bulk of it, sorry, very aggressive, isn't it? me nuts. That's gone. So next job. Okay now because we're going to need an eye on each side and we're going to need them to level up what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the eye right through. So I have the sharp point of my scissors and I am literally pushing that through. Okay. Very aggressive make. So I've got the eye the right way round Yeah, so if you ever get given a soft toy for me and you feel a hard lump, it's because I've lost the eye. <laughs> There's another eye in there. And all I'm doing is I'm bringing that through to the hole and then I'm going to put the back on it now so that that's done. And then I can come round and I can do exactly the same on the other side. And as I've done them whole at the same time, I know that my poor little putty cat is going to be equal. And then um, things do look better when they are balanced. They really do, these soft toys. So there we go. Just push that on there. I also need to turn this all inside out. So, okay. And then with a knitting needle or something, then I'm going to push it through so that my limbs are straight. Okay, let's see where we are. I've got two eyes, one ear. I know, poor little chap. And then coming down to the leg. Careful not to push the tail actually in the leg. <laughs> yes, I know I was. <clears throat> so, this is the tail. And it is going to be difficult to turn these fiddly bits inside out. Um, it's just one of those things, you know. If you want perfection, then... Yes. Now we did do those little cuts just to make it turn inside out a lot easier. And that'll be the foot. Or is that the tail? Oh, got all turned around. So there we are. Just squeezing that through, very gently pushing it out. And it should come out with a little bit of a pop. And any extra bits I can always tweeze out from this side so that I don't ruin my stitches. Now stuffing. Okay, if you're giving this as a toy uh, to a child, then 
um, you really do need to use uh, CE tested or the equivalent, your country's equivalent. Now, as it is an ornament, I can use any type of stuffing that I like. And I am going to use pillowcase stuffing. Because if it's good enough for our heads to sleep on, then it's good enough for this. So he is actually looking a bit like a camel. But I can rectify that. Um, if you're very clever at stuffing, you can rectify certain problems. Or what we can do is we can just embroidery stitch maybe some whiskers on him and some fluff on the back of his ears. So let's get the majority stuffed anyway. And any offcuts that you have of this fleece is also an excellent stuffing material, so um, that's easy enough to do. So I'm now going to just sew up the back. I'm going to use the sewing machine again, and what I'm going to do is I can either fold this round and stick a couple of pins in it so that. I've got that curb that we cut earlier, or I could just do it, but I'm going to use just a couple of pins, so I've still got that sort of scared look. Okay. I'm going to try and not push any more of these eyes on the floor, because that's where the last two went. Now again, pins, machine, bad. So. Now if you have some invisible thread, then that would be ideal for whiskers. If not, then white cotton would work just as well. So, and I've sewn up the outside in grey thread. Now, I'm a strong believer that if you use black thread on black, it really does make it look not black. So if you use grey thread, then you make it look black. Okay, so a needle, a little bit of white cotton, and a little bit of black cotton and then just to highlight these bits. Okay. <laughs> I'm always burying something or knocking it on the floor. going to do with black thread is give him a couple of bits of hair on his ear and also I can define the ear as well so that will make it look a bit more realistic but because I know that I traced round the exact copy of the drawing I know that it is an exact copy of what I intended to do so that's why his head looks so small and maybe he looks like a camel um, but we can work through this. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a small stitch and then I'm doing a loop and I'm going to leave it like that. I'm coming in, I'm doing a small stitch and then I'm going to do a loop again. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I am now going to cut those stitches, those loops. But because I've done the littlest one and I've pulled it tight, and because fleece is quite a grippy fabric, 
I can get away with just leaving them loose because they won't come out easily. You know, you they will come out if you washed it or if you if you did something like that. So with the leftover thread as well, I can just put a little tack in just to hold his tail up. Now, of course, I could have um, cut it so that it was attached. A bit more complicated, and of course, I could have stuffed it a bit more. So, let's get some whiskers. We either need some white or some light coloured thread. I've got a light grey on this bobbin. Yeah, if you do get a chance, um, I I used to spend ages trying to find bobbins and unthread bobbins. Um, because I've got like a, a universal type sewing machine, I was actually able to buy all of these bobbins for 15p each, which means that I've got loads and loads and I can just not even worry about it. I can um, just keep colours that I'm likely to use. I don't have to tidy them up afterwards. So makes life a lot easier and then the ice cube tray she's looking a bit grubby but <laughs> yes sometimes when especially the suede app, I was um, working quite a lot with that a couple of weeks ago and um, I just made dust it, it, I suppose it's because it's real man-made fabric just just dust everywhere every time I cut it okay so there we are, I got my little pretty cat silhouette ready to go on the windowsill for Halloween. Well thank you ever so much for watching, my name's Fiona from Weekly Sewing Bee and hopefully I'll catch you again. Thank you.